Welcome to today's 3D print. Let's talk about what I've been printing on my Ender 3. Stay tuned. So, I've been running the Ender 3 basically non-stop, 24-7, whenever I can run something. Very first print, I believe you've already seen, it is the little dog. Came out great, no problems. This is um, CC Tree um, Green. Good filament. I've had no problems with it so far, so I'm pleased with it. Uh, let's talk about what I've printed. So, of course, I've printed Marvins, and I've printed Vases, and I've printed Benchies, and I've printed Maker Coins. All kinds of stuff. So, let's start off with my standard benchmarks. Um, these are transparent PLA, um, standard CC Tree Green, and... ABS and no problems. The prints are extraordinarily clean, including the little hook. Very, very clean. Um, first, I finally figured out where the bulk of the noise was coming from in the prints, and it is because of this piece here. This is the um, the piece. I believe it runs like this. No, it has to run like this. Like that. Yes, this runs on the vertical. So your right-hand vertical rail of the printer rides inside of these wheels here like this. And I had to dramatically loosen this wheel so that when this was just sitting on the rail, it wobbled like this. But when I bolted to the printer, it was stiff. And that's because I believe these holes are incorrect. I believe this is not in the right position on the x-axis gantry um, arm. It needs to be moved outward. Um, it was binding up. It was causing, it was not binding up, but too much force. It was a lot of force being pushed on this wheel. You had to kind of force it onto the printer, which applies a lot of tension, which makes the z-axis motor have to work harder to move it up and down, which makes the x-axis have to work harder because things are being stretched. Uh, but mostly on the Z, and what would happen is the arm would be forced to lag behind. So when they would move up, it would do this, and it would move down, it would do this. And that's because the force on this was too great. Took this off and basically made the printer into a cantilevered printer, just like the Ender 2, where the arm just floats out in space. No problem. The quality of improvement in the prints is stark and dramatic <laughs> it's a big big difference um, to give you an idea let's see if I can show you well, you're not going to see it on something small the less than perfect layer alignment so how best to show that this is something that's hard to show on camera um, but you actually you can kind of see it there if you know what you're looking for you can see this is a perfectly good print and this is PETG by the way but you can see, see the layers aren't quite right. It almost looks like Z-banding. It's not really Z-banding, but it kind of looks like Z-banding. The layers just aren't perfect. Well, after making the change, the layers are now perfect. Smooth as a baby's butt. So, no more problems with that. And so I went and printed the big vase. And as you can see, absolutely gorgeous i consider this now a top-notch printer and this is airtight so it will hold water um three bottoms three perimeters and then vase mode the rest of the way up at a 1.05 extrusion to give me that little bit thicker wall um this one does not like um 1.2 extrusion you can see the bottom here is a thicker extrusion and it's 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 fine but it's a little sloppier you'll also notice no more pattern in my fins. The fins are nice and smooth now. I'm twisting it back and forth so you can see the light shimmer across it, which would expose any pattern. And this was speeded up as well, sped up. Here, this change here is where I um, reduced the extrusion multiplier back to something a little more reasonable. Um, so now I'm getting splendid prints out of this printer. So for now, if you have one of the early printers, just remove this, leave it cantilevered. Make sure you really tighten down those two bolts that hold this other plate, 
the left vertical gantry take away the washers get rid of the washers really crank them bolts down tight just be careful not to strip them or strip the aluminum that you are screwing through but get them as tight as you feel comfortable with and now it holds bed level consistently it, um i don't have to keep tweaking the arm um, previously i'd have to bump the arm to get the bed level back to where it was because the arm shifted now it doesn't do that anymore i am still going to do um on this one here i can show you but on the other one it's the same type of deal you have the three wheels and you have these two holes what it needs it needs a third hole it needs that third hole to prevent this arm from moving because it's aluminum you can't really crank down the two and this this hole here is too large it allows play now what i can do to get this working again because i would like to have that on there for stability is um i can oval out these holes so make these holes larger left and right just by wiggling a drill bit back and forth which would allow me to move this around so i would bolt this back on loose so that it would jiggle okay and then i would tighten this wheel and this whole thing would shift until it was snug on the rail but it wasn't applying pressure to the x arm and once i have that snug this correct and there's enough play here to allow that then tighten these two bolts and now it will be in the correct position and there won't be resistance as it moves up and down so that's a modification that i will plan for my next video for the ender 3. so let's show you some of the prints so you saw the marvins so here's the benchies um i believe this is the abs one there's a little bit of zitting this is in the early days before i got it tuned out uh, same thing but here's a more corrected one this is in the cc tree and this is a new color 3d racks of bahama blue haze i love this color this these are the guys that make the purple haze as you can see it's got that slight iridescence to it really beautiful color the ender 3 does have salmon skin it's something to do with the 24 volts because apparently the board inside this printer is the exact same board that's in the cr10 that board is apparently capable of running at 12 or 24 volts um, and when you run it at 24 volts it has salmon skin very 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 mild i mean i actually didn't even notice it at first until i actually looked for it i actually i didn't notice it until i looked at the benching and you can see see the diagonal lines on the benching wall there that's an indication of salmon skin and they're very very mild it takes the iridescence of this plastic to really show them up if i look at a another one that doesn't have the iridescence it's harder to see but i'm going to try smoothers anyway i actually have a set of smoothers right there so we will put some smoothers in there and see if that gets rid of that i don't consider it necessary the salmon skin is so mild it's nothing like the tornado had that i would i it'd be real irrelevant to me for most prints all right so next up is the low poly rose vases and so i printed those you are looking at a clear pla from 3d salutech a um, Bahama, Hama, Bahama Blue Haze from 3D Racks and CC Tree Green. And they all printed fine. The facets look pretty. This is a, I love this model. And of course you saw the big one that I'll show you with the clarity. How the print is much nicer now. And this is uh, Paramount's Primordial Earth. Very cool color. I like this color. This is what I also did the Jungle Boat in. The June Jungle Boat. I also did a more complex print. You're going to see this in an upcoming video. This is the Geode City. So it prints in multiple parts. So this is the Geode inner part, which was printed on the Ender 3, and this is also on the Ender 3. You can see the alignment layer issues that I had. If I were to reprint this now, those would be gone. And I was very surprised to see a coloring consistency. Paramount doesn't normally have a coloring consistency. So I'll have to play with that. The other print doesn't so that's weird but um it may just be the layer alignment because you can feel it where the color changes the layers feel different so i'm going to reprint this now that i've removed the bracket which will take care of that problem but i'm going to be supersizing this making a real big one i want to do it in carbon fiber and blue haze and that'll be coming up in a future video so i printed some rockets of course you have, this is a color that I've had for a while and I never got around to printing it and, oh man, 
<laughs> this is Filamentum's Noble Blue. What a stunning color. Oh, I'm in love with this color. Then I have the PETG Rocket. Thanks. Um, Bahama Blue Haze. The Primordial Earth. And another PETG Rocket. Now, this rocket demonstrates another problem I have with the printer. It's a minor problem, but it's a, it's a little annoying. I'm hoping it's something they can fix. The printer has a CPU limit of a sort. Um, you'll notice imperfections here. See, you can see it here and here and up here. Okay. That is a speed issue. When I crank the speed up on the printer, the printer stuttered. It's going I had to slow it down. I slowed down the printer and that went away. So apparently it's reaching a, a processing limit where the CPU can't handle the instructions as quickly as they're coming in from the G-code stream. So um, don't print super fast, 50, 60 millimeters a second. You know, don't go trying to print 100 millimeters a second. It, uh, the printer gets very unhappy, especially with complex curves. I mean, with lots of straight lines, you won't have a problem. But with continuous curves, like a vase print, a vase print is actually a pretty uh, mathematically intensive print for a printer because it's got to move all three axes very quickly and continuously. That's my assumption. I could be wrong on that. But it would it crosses my mind as a mathematically complex thing for a CPU to process. Well, four straight lines is a lot easier because you're not processing every step of the straight line. You're just saying start point, end point, go the speed. While curve, you have to give constant instructions at the resolution of the curve. So a hexagon would have six instructions for the same distance. An octagon would have eight instructions for the same distance. A curve would have whatever the resolution limit that you've defined into the model and the printer. So it could be thousands of instructions for the same one command to go the same distance. Um, so there's a, a throttle limit there. My Ender and my Michelangelo do not seem to have that issue. I can get those things... <laughs> <laughs> the Ender 2 and the Michelangelo will just crank. I mean, just <laughs> you'll, you'll eventually begin um, compromising the filament where the filament literally can't extrude that quickly. It starts stretching and tearing. Um, you can, and, the, and the printer's still happy. It'll, it'll happily try to do it. So your limitation on those printers is your filament, while your limitation on the Ender 2 is the CPU. Or Ender 3 is the CPU. But otherwise, fantastic prints. So I also did Maker Coins, all the same colors, ABS, CC Tree Green, uh, Bahama Blue Haze, Noble Blue, and Paramount Primordial. And you can see, it, absolutely good quality. These are all 0.12 layer prints. I have zero issues. I, I am loving this printer. I am abusing living crap out of it, making it print stuff for me. <laughs> this is the first time the printer has been off so that I can make this video because I don't want, it's not a quiet printer. The fans are very quiet, but the steppers are not quiet, so I don't want that on during a video. My new favorite test print, which I'll be making from now on because I am in love with this model, is Flexirex. I love, I don't know what it is, I love these flexible models, and I love this Flexirex. Uh, this is ABS, cheap $7.99 a kilogram ABS I got from one of those deals I posted. Then you have the uh, Filamentum Noble Blue, the 3D Rex Purple Haze, that's that transparent blue with that iridescent shimmer, PETG, and a high temperature PLA, this is a Raptor PLA printed at 245 from Maker Geeks, so this printer can handle pretty much anything up to 260 degrees, no problem. Um, one of my viewers, I don't even know if it's my, one of the viewers, I, I, one of my Somebody on Thingiverse remixed my articulated hinge thing that I put up as a lesson. He made an airplane, which I printed. I printed, actually, this on the Michelangelo. So he made an airplane, and I decided to remix it. So I added a... I shortened the height of the engines and the tail so it's more airplane-y. I added a vertical stabilizer. I added a cockpit. And I put a little airflow on the wings just so it had a little more detail and texture. under -strewed a little bit for this, but otherwise it printed good. I tried going down to 0.97, and it worked, but the printer's happier at 0.98, at least with this filament. Well, yeah, no problem. Even that super thin tail, you can actually see through it. 
That's the single extrusion fill that Simplify 3D can do, so it can handle fins, stuff like that. But that came out great. That was on the Michelangelo, not the Ender 3. And I also actually just, this is what I just finished today. Heather's going to love this. I printed that Dragonfly. I've been so wanting to print that Dragonfly. It's such a beautiful model. He did a really nice job on this particular model. And this is in Polyalchemy Elixir Dark Pink. What a pretty model. I did this hollow and I shouldn't have, but it filled okay. I am happy with it, but I should have put a little infill in this because of how brittle the um, layer adhesion is for the elixirs. But came out great. I'm very happy with the Dragonfly. I love that. Even sounds a little different. The, pop, the elixir filament sounds um, softer. It's, it's kind of strange. And I also did one last complicated print. Well, two last complicated prints, actually. Sir Snake. He's a dapper, well-dressed little snake. <laughs> I love this print. This is Listen to this. I love this. It prints on its back in a circle. And it's all print in place, articulated joints. This thing is amazing. It is... It's a, a, a snake with a hat. <laughs> I love that. That's why it's called Sir Snake. That is... Oh, that's incredible. I love this so much. Look how that tail just flops the way it wiggles. Beautiful. I want to cut this in half, supersize it, and wear it on my arm and have a snake shooter. <laughs> that's just... That's a cool print. I really love that print. And then... You guys are probably wondering, what's this? Well, this is Luby's cat. But I printed it at 150% in PETG. So this whole thing was printed in PETG on the Ender 3. It took a whole kilogram of PETG to print this. To give you an idea of scale, here's the wizard cat that Luby gave me. Luby triggers gave me. So here's normal scale. And here's big scale. I like their idea of making a winter cat. So I am going to print the collar and the eyes in the 3D Racks Bahama Blue Haze. So, or should I do the Noble Blue, which would be this color? These are the nose cones that I print for my rockets. So this is Noble Blue, Purple Haze. This is a transparent PLA and, of course, ABS. Um, let me know what you guys think. Should I do the collar in the slightly transparent 3D Racks purple blue haze, or should I do it in the filament and noble blue? I will use whatever color you guys decide I should use to print the collar and the eyes for the cat. But that's it. These are all the prints that I've made with my ender 3 so far it's been quite busy this is well over 100 hours of printing right here i think it's 120 hours of printing to make this cat and sir snake was a solid 25 26 hour print and i've been busy this printer will stay busy also let me know if you guys would like a live stream of me building the other two ender threes i bought two from creality i didn't care whether they were beta printers or not for 159 dollars i grabbed two of those bad boys um, so those two are sitting in the box at the door and I'm thinking maybe next Tuesday or Wednesday or maybe Monday night if I get home early enough from work, do a live stream of me building those two printers. I haven't figured out how I'm going to deal with the most important part of a live stream. How do I read your comments and reply to them? Replying is easy. I just speak. But how do I read them? I do my live streaming from my phones. Um, I don't have any kind of setup to do it from a PC. Um, can I... Can I put the chat up on a separate device? Like, can I have this camera doing the actual live stream broadcast and then have um, this device with the chat that I can have sitting right here in front of me so I can see the chat? I don't know if that's even possible. So let me know your guys' suggestions on how I should handle that. Should I do it on Twitch? Should I do it on YouTube? Um, I, I don't even know. I've never done a legitimate, you know, 
purposeful live stream before. I've broadcast live streams before, but there was never any intention of interacting. It was just strictly to be live. So let me know how you guys want me to handle that, and we'll go from there. But I am so far extremely happy with the Ender 3. It has a lot of issues. If you watch my other video, you'll see about those issues. Uh, apparently there is one more issue. Apparently if you run the parts cooling fan at 0%, that also turns off the cooling fan for the brain board. <laughs> Not good. They got to fix that. I haven't tested that yet, but apparently that's what happens. If you So if you try to print ABS with no fan, you'll also get no cooling fan for your brain board, and that's not good. Um, but check out that video, my unboxing video, and my um, update video where I go over some of the issues. It might come across as brutal, but that's okay. The whole point is to hopefully give Creality the feedback they need to make the corrections, because none of the corrections cost any money. It's just a matter of a tweak here, an adjustment there, a change of a part here. It shouldn't really cost them anything to incorporate those changes, so hopefully we will see an improved model. In the past, they have been very um, attentive to iterative improvements, so I'm hoping that will continue to be the case. And that's it. This is an all-purpose machine. I had no problem getting to 100 degrees. Um, it struggled to get to 110. It did it, but it struggled. So what I would do is I would set your first layer for 100 and then your second layer for 110. This way your printer's not sitting there doing nothing while it's trying to work its way up to 110. In the summertime, that'll have no problem hitting 110. But in the wintertime, cool house, it struggles a little bit to hit 110. But fantastic printer. I have no issues. Oh, and this was Raptor PLA Pearl White. Very, very pretty plastic for printing bones. I like that plastic. That's it. Um, subscribe, like, you know, if you want to come back and see more. I have links below where you can purchase these filaments. Um, purchase the printer, although it's sold out everywhere, so <laughs> you're not getting one yet until they get their next batch going. It's pre-orderable on Banggood, so you can pre-order it there, but um, any delay would be waiting for Creality to make the next batch of printers. I don't know if they're just going to start cranking them out or if they're going to do a, another 500 batch with some improvements or what. I have no idea. I don't have any contacts with Creality. That's it. You guys have a good day. Meow, meow.